things like F tilt to interrupt a yeah. spin dash or a spin doesn't, charge. Doesn't have a lot of long lasting hitboxes. Like Marth, of course, has great range, pretty solid frame data, but he doesn't have, you know, a, you know, a, a wolf laser that, you know, will be active from, you know, halfway across the stage. So you are absolutely right that the timing is going to be critical. Uh, and, but not only timing, but also just proper evasion. As we saw right there, he dashed back and caught Sonic once he had uh, actually taken to the air. Once, man, like getting Sonic to commit it can be can be troublesome, but coverage is the name of the game. And with these platforms and potentially some of these ledge setups, you could X could definitely find a ton of damage opportunities. Should he keep this percent lead? Yeah. You know, interestingly enough, it seems that the unconventional approaches uh, seem to be what's most effective for Sonic Need at the moment. Both of the neutral wins that he's gotten have been from just neutral bees from like halfway across the stage. Um, so it might be that, you know, X is, and you know, he's anticipating, seems to be playing around the spin dash very, very well. So maybe taking like a more, what's the word? unconventional approach the matchup might be uh, the proper thing but as i say that now he's shielding those uh those uh, homing attacks quite effectively so uh, no jump what Ooh, that's that hurts Did, i assume he held down there and that's why he, he had grabbed to. the ledge he definitely fast fell but he held down for too long yeah that's, that's super unfortunate yeah he was x was actually doing a great job right there you know and <laughs> not only that, but if you notice, at the end, Sonic Fiend started to, you know, get some momentum back in his corner. So it's not even like he can just, oh, let me go back to what I was doing before, which was working, because he, like, he had, he had basically built himself a lead, and then that, he, it feels like he needed that lead, and now that lead is just gone. And, and this is what can, this is what can really happen. Like, once you feel like you need to approach Sonic, you've, al you've almost already lost, or at least resigned yourself to playing at a deficit the entire game. Oh man, homing attack so good. Oh, like only more. <laughs> Alright, just dashing up. Just getting out of the corner as Sonic can do. And Sonic Fiend has, has definitely slowed this game down a little bit. Taking advantage of the gift that X has provided him. Oh, but finally finding that single hit. Man, just to get him a little bit of stage control. Oh, forward smash is huge, but not quite enough to do it. X, though, at 110% losing that stock. And now Sonic Team looking pretty comfortable, only 64%. And once again, we said how difficult it can be once you are forced to approach the Sonic. Once you no longer have the option of making him come to you, the things can just escalate so quickly. And right as I say that, oh, he almost got lapped in percent. It's, a, it's its own kind of vortex, and one that can happen from anywhere on stage if the tipper dancing blade doesn't come out. Sonic, rather light. I don't know if the tipper would have killed. Probably not, but at Possibly. the very least, it, it was an opening that he So, but like, the dancing blade, it's the tipper part of it is so strong. Oh, man, he was a little bit, a little bit mistimed and punished for, like... Sonic can do. Let's do that again sometime. I believe now you can avoid that by holding down and trying to put yourself in a tech situation, but that's, I mean, it's it's rough. Hey, look at this. Yeah, I will Pop. say. Hmm. So that game was very well played by Sonic Fiend by the end. But it's hard to necessarily totally glean or like predict what game two will look like based on that game one because of that, the unfortunate SD. It felt like at the very beginning when they started off on, you know, even footing, X was in really good control, knew what he needed to be doing in neutral and was getting really solid, good hits in. And now that we have the clean slate, uh, I'm curious to see whether he'll be able to repeat that early success and maybe translate that all the way into a uh, game two win. The only thing I'm worried about is the mental aspect of it. Like, you're not down in this game, and if taking a game by game is kind of the mindset you need to have against Sonic, because every game can go on for who knows how long. But it's it's the mental idea of being down one game already. Like, that can, that can start to swell, to swell on your mind, especially against a character that can play as Sonic can. 
He seems to be holding it tight, though, trying to reenact the start of game one. A little bit closer, though, for Sonic Fiend this time. Yeah, and now this is where things become... Like, the picture becomes clear. They're both... Both of their, these players have their percents in the red. But the kill actually goes to X, and that's huge for him. Now let's see if he's able to play to that lead. And, oh, I love that. I love that. You know, Sonic he goes over to the one side of the stage, kind of throws out some aerials, and X does absolutely nothing, making the clear and present statement, this is your game to approach on that. Yeah, it's kind of, it's really unfortunate that the matchup of a lot of Sonic matchups even can come down to who takes the stock first because that will dictate the tone of the game because just as much as Sonic can camp you out, you can camp out Sonic. His approach options are few and far between uh, besides spin charge, which isn't too risky on shield. He's doing a great job of making those homing attacks right after like automatically punish without whether it be a back air or up air out of shield. Oh, the spacing on that was so good. He was going for all these, you know, short hopping at the exact distance where baited him to drop shield and a quick forward smash, taking out X's first stock. And now, even though X has a really, really good lead here, if he doesn't take the stock soon, which he does, all right. No, this is a clean, clean stock up for X. And I, so far, I haven't seen Sonic Fiend be able to make a big comeback from behind against X. So it'll be hard to... Uh, we'll see how he fares, you know, given that now he's the one who's... It's, you know, it's everything is in his corner to make it happen. Uh, the the ball is in Sonic Fiend's, Sonic Fiend's court. If he's going to have to... If he's going to find a way to do this. But man, with the parries that are coming out from X on these platforms, the only thing I could really look at is, like, maybe you want to go for a couple... Or an up tilt a little bit more whenever Sonic's above you. But with the mix-ups that he's showing and the discipline through every one of these spin charges and spin dashes, he's not panicked whatsoever. Oh. Oh. Okay. Well... Hmm. I, you could call that an SD, or you could call it a tactical uh, tactical retreat to game three. Yeah, he was just he was reciprocating. It was the it was a game a game light homie stock. He he did. A favor. <laughs> yeah, homie stocks are they're they're a uh, they're a they're a set long investment. Yeah, you can do it whenever. You just get a homie stock coupon and you can trade it in at your Trader Joe's and there you go. <laughs> Oh. Wow. wow! The more you know. I mean, this website up. Good old Ultimate Frame Data, just in case. Has Kurgan Hammer finished the? Uh, never. All the frame data for the Ultimate characters. Never. Yet? He never did. No. 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 Well, what website do you use for it? I'm actually curious. UltimateFrameData.com. Yeah. Oh, okay. And there's a there's an app on your phone that you can get that's not it's not the same developer for both, but they function the same where you choose a character and has all the frame data and such. Which is nice. Though to be it's honest, handy. the website is just is functions fine on mobile, so Three, it does. Two, one, it's just if, if you're really that worried about it. Kalos. Yeah. yeah. So one thing uh Stages matter a lot for Sonic. Um, having a really long stage without the... Because if you noticed, in that previous game especially, X was using the PS2 platforms brilliantly, especially when he had the lead, as a retreat option, as a way to, you know, handle some of Sonic's approaches. So this time around, not only is the stage much longer, but the layout of those platforms is totally different. Okay, um, yeah. Oh, and he taunts! Yeah, I feel like this is, this is the right stage in theory. And F this or FD, but I'm guaranteed that FD was, FD was banned. Because why yeah, would you ever let Sonic go there? <laughs> but there's... Well, the thing that can come down to any game is... The moment where you, you look at your percent and it was like, Wait, I died at that percent? And for <laughs> Marth... That's Dancing Blade. It's infinitely Dancing Blade in all or in its prime variations. 
of players, like red, red, green, red, I think is is the one with a little delay in there somewhere. Oh, that's a huge... Oh, he definitely could have chosen a different getup time, uh, getup option there, right? Uh, he just kind of went for neutral getup and got hit by that up there. It didn't punish him too hard, but yeah, if you look at this Sonic Fiend, 82% already, and... It's like, he, I don't even know what option Sonic could just throw out that could take a stock from um, from X right now. He may have 129%. On a big stage like Kalos, he, he's still going to have to work for a kill. Yeah, man, like, Sonic Fiend really seemed to... While this counterpick is great in, uh, again, in theory, he pigeonholed himself into one play style. And with, with X taking these first two stocks now, it becomes hard for Sonic to land that finishing blow. He's forced to rely on hard reads or maybe a raw back air at some point. But it, X is giving him nothing. Oh, that's a punish. It's almost a very hard punish. He's <laughs> going for the up air forward smash with the platform. I like the idea, though. Yeah, and at this point, Sonic's being kind of just charging in, trying to get a single necessary hit. But that was playing right into X's hand. Game three ends up being a three stock, where just with that super powerful opener that X had, he absolutely capitalized it and took it all the way to a 2-1 victory. I will say that he was holding left. He, that, that should not have killed, I don't believe. But... Either his DI was late or he was trying to dash out of it. That first stock, though, no. Nah, that's just the power of Dancing Blade and the power of the tippers. Um, while Lucina is generally seen as the better character, the one consensus that I've seen many Marth and Lucina players, or just both players, depending, is that Marth usually has a better Dancing Blade because the setup out of the tipper setups out of that move are consistent, unlike the rest of his kit. So that's... Like, it's the dichotomy of playing against Sonic. You can, when you give him the lead, things can go, things can be a slow burn to the end where, where you end up losing. But if you get that lead first, so much of the cracks in Sonic's uh, normal game plan start to fall, and you really have to see the player think on their feet and create a new flowchart. Yeah, but anyway, that's going to be... Was that... I'm sorry, was that winners or was that losers? That was winners. That was that winners. That was winners. So, uh, Sonic Fiend still in the bracket, but now it's... Uh, no, it's best of five. X who's going What? Best oh, I'm five. sorry. You yeah. are right. I, oh I deeply God. apologize. We completely misled everyone. Uh, we're garbage commentators. We're dumb, dumb people. Uh, this <laughs> is best three out of five. So, we are going to be having another game at the very least uh, for, Sonic, uh, for Sonic Fiend to work with. Yeah, forgot top six best of five here at Xeno Wi-Fi. But man, that's a... Uh... Yeah, it slipped my mind. Still, with X playing the way he did in game four, or game three, and the same stage as game three, I I hesitate to say if there now, will be anything different. I So, okay, yes. Uh, on the one hand, this is the stage that he kind of got brutalized on in that last game. But... Uh, Already, we're seeing a much stronger start from Sonic Fiend. I think that it was it was the fact he took a really early stock than anything else that dictated how sort of one-sided Game 3 was. So now that Sonic Fiend... Yeah, yeah, you see, he's a lot more comfortable. He's not just running into X attacks anymore. And instead, he's being patient, just charging that spin dash and unleashing it at the right time to get chip damage here and there, catching these Marth landings, which can be really tricky. Marth has a you know, big hitbox in that sword, and yet Sonic Fiend is still finding the openings, doing good damage. Oh, and yeah, X trying to go for a huge hit, converting that down air into a forward smash, but it doesn't actually connect. And now he's down by about 29%. And climbing at this rate, but that man challenging at that p position was risky to say the least, and he's still living. That was a fantastic early up B, but on the way back down, he still gets caught. Sonic Fiend managing to get a sizable lead. Um, and more important than that, he can now play the way he wants to. And 
it's gonna be up to X here, but the benefit of Kalos for sorties is that recovery mix-ups aren't as aren't as devastating to them. They're setting up in the same position, and their aerials just need to cover a little bit more. While it, it's not, it doesn't change the game plan. It only really changes the spacing. That's if Sonic Fiend ever finds himself at ledge at all. Though he's holding center stage much more firmly in this matchup. Of course. <laughs> yeah. All right, as you say that, the back air coming out, and now this game is looking a lot more even, only about 30% or so separating these two. And at these lower percents, that's relatively meaningless. It does mean that uh, X technically does have to at least try a little bit harder to initiate. Given how much time is on the clock, he can still be relatively patient. But um, still, yeah, he needs to, if, if Sonic Fiend so chooses, yeah, he can do what he's doing right now, not engaging what he doesn't feel comfortable doing so. What a great time on hard. Yeah, that was really nice. You know, it's risky, but with the way that X has been approaching, it's been when Sonic Fiend has been spin charging. He's deciding at that point, I'm going to try and take space and either interrupt with a F tilt if I have the space, or uh, I'll just run up and shield. And then Sonic Fiend will dash past. I wonder if it's about that time as ooh, he gets the tipper up with their almost kills. It might be about that time we see a counter. Run up and counter one of these spin charges, and perhaps that's the that's a stock he needs to get the lead. You know, sometimes all you need out, out of Martho is a backer out of shield, and that'll do it. Yeah, it's actually, it seems that right now, X is doing a really good job playing around uh, Sonic Fiend's more straightforward defensive options. The fact he's going in and going like he's getting these grabs and as you saw right there it was just good pressure on his shield and finding managing to uh, punish the out of shield option with a back air and so now we have one stock a piece uh this is uh set point for uh x if he manages to take it which oh big opening possibly lots of damage but getting back down to the ground sonic fiend manages to avoid the worst of the worst Go Go Gadget, time to land. That down air was, I think he didn't even have his jump at that point. It was sniped by the up air originally. So had to get that call out. And he's never allowing homing attack to get going. Never permitting that mix up to even exist at all. He's always stuffing Sonic Feed whenever he goes for homing attack. I don't think he has a jump. Oh yeah, he had to up be early. And that's gonna be it. Just a that last stock in particular. X looking super, super strong. Uh, I have a question. Who's on the other side of winner's bracket that he might have to face down? Yeah, there it was. He jumped out of the spin dash and got got hit by a tipper F till prime, primely placed. That's going to do it. Very nice. X is going to yeah, be I would describe moving on to face the winner of Louis Jesus and Coltman. Which we're gonna get in, yeah we're gonna Ooh. be getting the other side of winter semi on stream still best three out of five and as x is looking ready to ready to to match them in winners finals mm. Luigi now uh, Coleman, has x gotten this far in xeno wi-fi before i don't think so no so this is right. pretty sure this is the the best he's performed uh, in yeah, bracket. I mean, he is playing on fire tonight so already he's at least if what we you know think is true uh he's already exceeded expectations but like i mean last week we saw how slayed it was like the first time he ever got to top eight and then he went all the way to second place so seems